please put your hands together for Sue Bolton. So which countries are allowed to get away with going around the world and assassinating people at will? The two main ones I can think of are Israel and the United States. Sovereignty means nothing. Just imagine if the Palestinians bombed in uh, Israel, or any other country for that matter, went and bombed or carried out assassinations in Israel or the United States. There will be hell to pay. And Israel hasn't just ignored the sovereignty of countries in the Middle East. I mean, they're the main targets of Israel, but also they've carried out assassinations in other countries. Italy is one I remember, I don't remember all the examples, but Mossad has carried out ruthless assassinations in a number of countries. And this is predating the 7th of October. And, you know, today when I was reading about the assassination of Ismail Haniya, I saw um, a comment which described this as being gangster-style assassinations. And that is a very good description because it's sort of lawless, get away with anything, think you can just exert your might. And I think we do have to be clear that the assassination of Ismail Haniya, who is leading the negotiations for ceasefire, is an attempt by Israel to prevent a ceasefire. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to prevent a ceasefire from happening. Save. Israel wants a never-ending war. Save. Save. Almost 10 months since the 7th of October. That's what it seems to me. Or 10 months of constant bombing and starvation, starvation of a population which is essentially a prisoner population because there's a bloody big wall around Gaza and, you know, there are ships to prevent um, Gazan fishing people from going any more than a couple of kilometres from the shore. So this is a conscious attempt by Israel to sabotage any attempt of a ceasefire. They were coming under pressure for a ceasefire and I think Hamas was right to hang out to try and get a permanent ceasefire because that's what's needed. But in the end, they did make a compromise to try and get some respite for the Gazan people by, by being prepared to negotiate around that. And so Israel was under pressure because Hamas was preparing to negotiate to try and get some kind of peace for the Gazan people. But Israel has sabotaged that. They don't want ceasefire. They don't want peace. And if you look at what they're doing in the West Bank, as well as what they're doing in Gaza, they are on an absolute extermination, genocidal, never-ending war trajectory. That, uh, that's what it seems to me. Um, they are clearly, they are a rogue state and they're a threat to the whole world. And what I can see, it reminds me of um, all the discussion around countries uh, appeasing the Nazis um, when they're on their rise to power. And that seems to be, you'd have to say, that's what's happening. Most of these Western imperialist nations are appeasing Israel. You know, I would put it pretty much equivalent to the rise of Nazism because you look at what they're doing in Gaza you can't see it any other way um, this is a policy of appeasement and what is what Israel is doing is a threat to the whole world in the sense that the United States never-ending war also was a threat to the entire planet we working-class people we don't benefit from war Rich people, the people who make the weapons, are the ones who benefit from war and the US corporations that are going to benefit by Israel remaining in place as a police state for the Middle East 
they're the ones who are benef will benefit from war. We have no interest in war. Even Israeli people don't have an interest in war, even though they might be, most of them might be sucked in to think they do have an interest in um, keeping going with the genocide. But it's actually, you know, this war, this genocide is having an impact on ordinary Israeli working class people, even if they don't know it. Because all of that money that Israel is using to kill Palestinians is coming out of services and so forth for ordinary people, poor people within Israel. So no, no ordinary people win out of war. Um, so we have to try and stop what Israel is doing with every fibre of our bodies. And I know people are doing their utmost and I think we've had an impact but we know we're up against the most powerful people in the world, the most powerful militaries in the world, because the US military is really backing Israel, even though they might not have massive soldiers on the ground. But the Vietnamese did bring down the biggest military power in the world. So we've got to keep that in mind. These, these powers can be brought down and even I remember an instance after the US invaded Iraq, and I remember um, a US um, helicopter, I think it was, for memory, was shot down. And it was, um, I think it was an Iraqi farmer or a group of Iraqi farmers, they weren't soldiers, that shot it down. They found some sort of weak spot in this helicopter. Um, so it's that. You know, I mean, these powerful regimes, they are hugely powerful. It takes a lot to bring them down, but there are weak spots. And we do know that our movement does have the majority of support in Australia and around the world. So we have to keep on going. And I heard that Peter Khalil, <laughs> Some people know him. He's a local member where I live. Just been made envoy to so for social inclusion, whatever the hell an envoy is. Yay! He just made a statement today, first statement as an envoy, whatever the hell that is, um, saying that they're doing everything possible to get a ceasefire. What are they doing to get a ceasefire? They're doing everything except for what counts, which is they're refusing to sanction Israel. Israel's doing everything. Sanction Israel now! Sanction Israel now! Sanction Israel now! Sanction Israel now! Sanction Israel now. <coughs> yeah, it's exactly what we've got to do. <coughs> so in case anyone is getting sucked in, I know we're not getting sucked in by people like Peter Khalil, but there may be people out there who don't follow politics much who might be getting sucked in by the Australian government suddenly talking more about ceasefire. That they're not doing anything to put pressure on Israel for a ceasefire. So we have to keep talking to people out there who might be vulnerable to getting sucked in by the media. So that's, what, that's why it's important that we keep protesting as well as having those conversations with people. <coughs> And one, two, three, four, we don't want your bloody war. One, two, three, four, we don't want your bloody war. Five, six, seven, eight, Israel is a terrorist state. Five, six, seven, eight, Israel is a terrorist state.